Clive Rosfield is the most famous Final Fantasy 16 character to date. Now, I know that sounds like a no-brainer considering that he's the main protagonist of the story, but when you take a closer look into Clive's story, his popularity isn't so set in stone. Before we get into the lore of Clive's fame, let's talk about his popularity amongst the FF fanbase. Clive is highly regarded by fans for a handful of things including but not limited to his apparently good looks and his hero-like frame. There are entire forums of discussion dedicated to Clive for his design alone. Some fans even claim that details as small as his name play a role in how well of a Final Fantasy protagonist Clive would be. Considering the positive reception of Clive Rosfield, you would expect it to reflect in the numbers. And the numbers don't disappoint, because when comparing the search volume of the most iconic Final Fantasy characters, one protagonist comes out on top. Clive Rosfield is second only to Cloud Strife, and those two are followed by Noctis as well as Titus and Yuna. Clive brings in around 10,000 searches a month, and in conjunction with Jill, Clive and Jill bring in over 50,000 interested fans worth of search volume a month. Not bad for a couple of Final Fantasy 16 protagonists. No. There is still one more thing that we're missing before we can truly call Clive famous though. Because a famous protagonist equals a famous Final Fantasy game. After all, we all know the first game that Cloud Strife appeared in, that being Final Fantasy VII. So, when compared to the other games, how popular is Final Fantasy XVI actually? Well, Final Fantasy XVI already sold over 3 million copies before closing out its first month. Now, 3 million is a drop in the bucket in comparison to the tens of millions that the franchise has sold in total. And in comparison to the Final Fantasy VII remake selling over 14 million copies, the sales numbers may not sound too big. But don't let that distract you from the fact that Final Fantasy XVI only falls short when comparing it to some of the most popular Final Fantasy games before it that have been out for years prior. In reality, Final Fantasy XVI is on pace to perform as well as some of the best games in the franchise. That makes you think though, what makes Clive such a famous protagonist? In Final Fantasy VII, Cloud stood out due to his rather dark persona, and for some people, Cloud was the first time they ever witnessed a protagonist deal with the mental side of adventure. That's what made Cloud famous. Clive, on the other hand, has a different claim to fame. What makes Clive famous is in part what makes any other character in the franchise famous, his character development. People love Clive because he's a great character. From the beginning, you and I have our expectations subverted. Clive is the eldest son and is expected to become the dominant of the Phoenix. If you don't know what a dominant is, dominants are people who have been blessed with the ability to host icons, which are just very powerful beings, like for example the Phoenix. Unfortunately enough for Clive, he wouldn't be the one to host these powers. It would actually end up being his younger sibling, Joshua. And this is the first event that develops Clive into a character worthy of a large fan base. Because just as you begin the story of Final Fantasy XVI, Clive is overshadowed. A feeling that almost anyone can either relate to or at least feel sympathy for. When talking about the most iconic Final Fantasy characters, there's always an event or story that makes that protagonist beloved by fans. For Cloud, that event was Aerith's death. It's pretty much one of the most iconic moments in the franchise's history. So what's that moment for Clive? I'll explain. The father of Joshua and Clive is a duke, so he's very high up in royalty. Their father decides that it's time to ambush the empire of Sambrek. After riding horses for some time, they decide to take a rest at a place called the Phoenix Gate. This is where tragedy starts. The father of Joshua and Clive has his army ambushed and in the process, he's killed. At this point, Joshua turns into the Phoenix out of frustration. But this monster isn't alone, because another icon by the name of Ifrit would retaliate against the Phoenix. Ifrit would end up killing the Phoenix in a rage-filled rampage, and by proxy, Joshua would end up passing away as well. What makes this scene so gut-wrenching is the delivery. From our perspective, Ifrit may very well be Clive losing control of himself and becoming a dominant for the first time, even though Clive was initially passed on by the Phoenix. This was Final Fantasy XVI's 
Aerith moment. Okay, with all that being understood, what more is there to explain? Aside from lore, Clive is the most famous FF16 character for more typical celebrity type reasons. Truthfully, time has passed, and Final Fantasy has become a gaming franchise less concerned with pleasing its original player base located in Japan. With this in mind, you start to realize how typical celebrity reasons may make modern Final Fantasy protagonists more popular than their predecessors. Clive looks western, and his backstory is heavily inspired by European history. With his father even being an archduke, the westernization and globalization of Final Fantasy has led to the protagonists of the franchise becoming more easily digestible to audiences around the world. Many fans mention that Clive is one of the most well-defined Final Fantasy protagonists physically speaking. And again that plays into Clive fitting into more western beauty standards when it comes to the male physique, holding a burlier frame than some of his protagonist counterparts which is in stark contrast to the typical standard of a slimmer frame that's expected of Japanese citizens. This isn't just me theorizing either, because the people behind Final Fantasy said it themselves. Square Enix wants to, and I quote, enhance its presence in the global market. But they also mentioned that Japan has, quote, graying demographics for video games. The Japanese population is the oldest in the world, with 29% of its population being over 65 years old. Let's just say that Clive's audience isn't necessarily in Japan. On top of that, the second week physical sales of Final Fantasy 16 in Japan were only 37,763 copies. That's around a 90% drop off in comparison to its first week sales. FF16 is not having these same problems outside of Japan, so there's no reason to worry. Global sales and the positive reception of Clive Rosfield end up more than making up for less sales in Japan. All things considered, it can't just be that, right? After all, there's more to Clive's popularity as a character than his westernization, surely. Well of course there is. Clive is defined by his relatable story of tragedy and being overshadowed. He also proves himself to be worthy of being in the running for iconic Final Fantasy characters, thanks to his path to redemption during his journey. Furthermore, his design and circumstances are unique, which separates himself from other FF protagonists. Clive starts his journey at only 15, making him one of the youngest protagonists in the franchise. There's a lot of things that make Clive the most famous Final Fantasy 16 character. But what really ends up tying it all together is that Clive as a protagonist can stand as his own outside of the Final Fantasy franchise. Clive Rossfield isn't just a good Final Fantasy protagonist, Clive is one of the better protagonists that you can play as in the gaming industry as a whole. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more PlayStation and Final Fantasy content. This was Next Station, I'm out.